speaking to me now, James Lights Out Lily. Um, James, I'm guessing uh, probably most of your fans probably already know your big news, but uh, do you want to just tell us straight from the horse's mouth yourself? I've been blue tech verified on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so okay then. Okay. <laughs> Is that the news event? Well, well that's a question. I'm actually interested in that because out of curiosity, how do you get blue ticked on Instagram? Oh, I tried before, right? And um, you, you just click on get a verified badge and they say, why are you an interest as a public person? So um, I, in the gym, um, they ask me to send like loads of clips and like interviews and stuff. So I've tried a couple of times, been knocked back. So I, um, Remy said, oh, as soon as the fight gets announced, make sure you get on it. So I got on it, like, the BBC News article, I like, well, you're introducing me on the YouTube, my box rep, the BKFC page, the BKFC Instagram, which had like fucking 70,000 likes or whatever, because like, they got such a big following. And then Robin Deacon messaged me, Rocky Robin Deacon, saying, oh, well done, bro, you've been verified. I was like, what? He's like, you've got blue tech. And I was like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, it was easier than I thought. But, um, yeah, it's like, we'll lead on the other bit of news. <laughs> okay, so, the, the other bit of good news you got? Can you just tell the viewers? So, yeah, um, June 23rd, I'm fighting for the World Likely Championship in Hollywood, which is a suburb of Miami, um, against the number one pound for pound fighter, uh, Luis Baboon Palomino. So uh, the, the fight was announced, was it a, a week, couple weeks ago? Two weeks ago now, yeah. Two weeks ago. It's kind of shorter than usual, but... But uh, did, did you did you know prior to the official announcement that the fight was in a possibility? Because Palomino, looking by his social media, was looking to go other directions. Yeah, well, there was a rumour that he was fighting Austin Trout, obviously, because um, I fought him out a few times now. I got a little bit of a fan base there, so I heard snippets from a couple of people over there that I was getting passed by, and... To be honest, I, I wasn't too pissed off of it because I, I can understand the reasoning. You know, he, he's made five defences. There's all these big names going into BKFC, but they're not fighting the regular guys. So I could understand him wanting a big fight. And I knew I was going to get the title shot at some point. So, um, and then about eight weeks out, the fights hadn't been announced. So I was like, right, something's weird here. For such a big fight, especially going to a new city they'd never been in before, I get someone like Austin Trout who... If people don't know, he's been in Canelo, Cotto, Lara, you know, he's fought, he was still like ranked number six in the world by the Ring Magazine before he came over the better at home. So, for that fight to build up, you know, you need at least eight weeks to build a fight. So I was like, it's a bit weird in the sand thing. So, we were picking up the training anyway. I was never out of the gym like I usually am. I was always thing. And then, about six weeks, two days out, something like that, we had a text message, will Lily be ready 23rd of June? And it was yes, straight away, you know, we didn't ask, didn't ask the money, didn't ask where, we just said yes. Um, uh, sorry, initially it was meant to be the 16th of June, and then the venue contract came through for the 23rd of June in the Hard Rock Hotel in uh, Hollywood, Florida. So, yeah, it's a big one. So we kind of knew it was happening. Um, Austin Trout saw on the podcast and I probably bitching about it. But <laughs> Palomino, um, for, for your fans perhaps who are not overly familiar with um, BKFC and bare knuckle boxing, the more James Lilly fans rather than bare knuckle fans, well, tell us about him. What, what type of fighter is he? So he comes from an MMA background. He um, he's fought like if you're a UFC fan, he's fought Justin Gaethje, Jorge Masvidal. He fought the who's who's of people in an organisation called the WEC, which I think became PFL. And he, he was one of them that probably should have been in. The UFC. He's a two-weight world champion. He, um, he, he said he's fought the North, but I, I, according to him, it's the injuries. But he's he's the face of Ben at the moment. He's a two-weight world champion, undefeated in eight fights. He's beaten everyone who's put in front of him. Um, and I'm fucking relishing that this is the fight I've got. And this is the fight I want. So yeah, I'm, uh, it's going to be a hard one. It's going to be in his hometown, but like I said before, everything we've done has helped us gain experience to level the playing field. We've been to America twice, adjusted to the time zones, the weight cuts, fought in that different type of ring which you can't really simulate unless you've got money to you know, buy a bigger ring. And yeah, we know everything about it now, so you know, nothing's new, it's just another day in the office for us. 
And um, I think I'm right in saying Palomino's fought uh, good John, who you previously fought as well? That's right, yeah. So, Tyler, I think, him and Mick Terrell were the first UK guys to go over. And uh, Tyler fought him, I think, uh, 2019, maybe 2020. It was when lockdown was happening, and Tyler had to, um, what's it called? What's it isolate. Name? Isolate for two weeks in Costa Rica or something like that. But yeah, Tyler went over and fought him, and they became good friends. and. Tyler's moved to Miami to train in his gym. And um, there was a lot of talk, if you follow the BKFC online, that, that Tyler might have got a shot before you, am I right in saying that? Uh, I or was yeah. he hoping to get a shot at a vacant title? Uh, it sounded like they were angling for, if Tyler was to beat his last opponent, Tony Soto, they were angling for the rematch of me, and I think maybe Palomino might have given up or defended the belt higher, so it would be like an interim title or something like that. Um, I, I don't think that would have happened, that, that was more from their camp than BKFC. BKFC never mentioned that to me. But yeah, they, they were angling for the rematch, but obviously Tyler was on the back of a controversial decision in the coach fight the other day, so it looks like he's running that one back. Okay, um, I mean, how, how much has bare knuckle boxing changed your life in general? It's, it's like I said to you upstairs, like, um, like January 2022, I was trying to sell tickets for a local show in the Paddy Pavilion because uh, I obviously left um, BKB and went to BKFC and I wasn't getting any answers out when I was fighting. It's just the way they work, you know, I, I, I wasn't accustomed to it. I was sitting around, so I was like, right, I'll take an MMA fight. So I started grappling again. And I, and I like I thought I was gonna just wrap it in, and then the MMA fight fell through, and then like two weeks later I got matched for my debut for all of us. In that twelve month period, but a little over it now, fourteen months maybe. It's bizarre, like um, you know, it was a dream to fight abroad, and for now I'm fighting regularly in America. Um, obviously, the, the money's a lot better than it's ever been. And the recognition, you know, that's all I wanted, you know, the money's a bonus. So what I wanted to do was to be in with the top guys so I could look back when I'm older and show my kids and my grandkids, look, my daddy fought this guy, he was the best in the world, you know. It's blown my mind, like, you know, especially in, like, a small town like Swansea, you know, everyone knows me, everyone comes up and wishes me well, you know, it's bizarre. My missus was pissed off and didn't get the pair, so people were asking for photos and stuff. But I, I still can't get my mind around it because I'm just, you know, I'm just some kid from Tamil. You know, it's, it's, it's mind blowing. You don't think about it too much. I'm just like, you know, it's mad. And the whole, uh, for people watching this interview, I, I was with you in New Orleans. So the whole BKFC setup, it's a very professional setup. It, it got, got the feel of a big organization as well. Yeah, it, it's like. You know, the first time I fought there, you know, they, they've got, if you fight on a smaller show, like, you know, you'd expect it not to be as good as, say, like, when we were now when we fought, when MVP and Mike Perry had, like, and that was, we knew it was in Wembley, we knew it was big, but when I fought in Florida the first time, it was on a Thursday night, it was a fight night rather than one of their main cards, and they still had, there all the lighting rigs, big stage, py uh, pyrometrics, big screens, you know, check weigh-ins, if you need anything, there's someone there, a guy driving around. It, it's, it's, it's just, I've never fought the UFC, but I expect that's exactly what the UFC is like to work for, you know. They're getting bigger and bigger. They've got chefs now doing your food, fight week. They're getting, this is going to be the last show where you, you're allowed to have your own corner kits again, picked up by sponsors. So it's going to be the UFC where you've got to wear like a uniform. It, and it's just, it's mind blowing that I think I got into the right time because I think the organization is just, on an upward trajectory, and I think at some point it's going to be as hard to get in as UFC. And uh, just about New Orleans, we also memories from that the whole event. <laughs> to be honest, it was it was more like a holiday than you know a fight. You know, we had such a laugh. You know, for you know, like yourself, Randy, me, Di, and Josh. We spent time together in gym and stuff, but we've all been, you know, don't do as much old stuff, but yeah, it was just such a laugh, all experiencing the same stuff together, like new stuff, it was, I, I didn't stop laughing from, you know, the time I got off the plane, the time I got back on the plane, it was, it was brilliant, it was an experience of a lifetime, 
And you know, I feel a bit of pride that I, I was able to take people over with me that have never been to the States before, you know, and then can do it again in four days. That that makes me more proud than you know saying like you know I'm earning this money, but you know I'm getting to do stuff. And you know, I watched like the Conor McGregor documentary the other day, and you know he, he looks after all the people. And if I ever got that level, that's what I'm gonna do, you know. And it's just it fills me with pride. And uh, just a fight with Bobby Taylor. Just going back to that fight. I mean, you hit with the. I don't think actually. I, I interviewed after the fight, but it's not online. But uh, you, you hit you with a big punch, right on the bell. I think you do a two punch actually, a big right hand, then another clipping shot. I mean that. Were you hurt at all by those shots? No, um, I was more annoyed because he. You you can see, <laughs> at the end of the round, he catches me. I think it's a big right hand and a big left hook, and I spin him on the ropes. And I caught him with a little right, like a short right hand coming off. And you can see me staring at him, and I was more pissed off because I, I had like um, it's like a bridge on my teeth because I was around my teeth done, and he broke the bridge of my teeth, and I felt them move, and I was like ah, but then I could see him, and I was staring at him because I could see he was holding the ropes, he was pulling back himself a corner, and like his lip was hanging off, so I knew he was done. So no, I, I didn't, he didn't hurt me at all. The, the punches were hard, and you know, what's the word? They were painful, but not like concussive, like, you know. But I just think that's. And another thing about that, that the punch he caught you with, and he caught you with another clipping shot, I've watched the clip back about three, three four hundred times, I would have been editing it for the film. You seem to catch him with a right hook as he lunges in, that's probably one of the most solid punches you've landed in the fight, I mean, it seems like that's the punch that caused the cut. I, I, I thought I'd seen it um, earlier in the round, I could see like a little bit of his lip hanging down, but it wasn't as bad, and then... When I caught him, like I, or as I spun off the ropes, that's what did the most damage. And you can see me like staring. I was like, you, you could see like bubbles coming through his lips. When I, I was like, oh, he's done. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like when I zoomed in on it as well, you could see his face. Yeah. You know, most fighters don't show any physical pain, but he actually looked in a lot of pain. Yeah, it said like he grabbed the ropes. I didn't think he was sort of tired or anything, but I, I felt like he was in a little bit of pain going back. But I, I think you know. The doctor was right to stop it because otherwise, you know, how much pain and damage can you take to your face? And I, I know you've already touched on it um, earlier in the interview. Um, the reception you had of the American fans, which people will see in the documentary, I mean, it was amazing. Like, people come up to you asking you for autographs, asking for pictures. Like, you, you, give, you give a hat to one of the children and ask for a picture. And die shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, it's different because. When I went to Florida the first time, like a couple of people like recognised me, like the fighters, they're like, yeah, I know who you are. And then this time, it is, honestly, it's mind-boggling. It's because they've got such a big population and they must have such a big fan base for different sports. It, it's, it, it's, it blows my mind. Like, you know, I, I was introducing myself to UFC fighters and they were like, yeah, we know who you are. And I'm just like, it's, honestly, it's, it's a different, a completely different mentality out there. And, like, you know, they couldn't believe I was working full time and stuff. It's, it's, it's a mad world out there. But it's definitely somewhere I could sit and move and if like, the right opportunity come up. But yeah, it's, it's crazy over there. <laughs> and also, as well, I, I didn't realise it on the documentary, people will see it. Um, I interviewed the UFC fighter Bryce. Oh, uh, Bryce, oh, what's his surname? No. Fud Nasty is his nickname. Is. I can't remember his surname. Who was, who was predicting Bobby to win by knockout? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Outside, yeah. It's just mad that you caught him on camera because one of my corner would die, obviously, people don't know. He's a massive MMA nerd. He's like, he always shouts at me for never having photos with like MMA and UFC stars because I'm, you know, I just feel like they don't really want a photo and it's more of a memory for me. But he's like, so we got some photos last time and he was like, really, really. Annoyed like that, he didn't see him. <laughs> funny enough, we got him on camera. And, yes, <laughs> and uh, you were talking to Chris Lytle, yeah, that's right, yeah, about your previous Twitter wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, if you follow me from back in the day, because I probably wasn't at the top then, I used to you know, used to give people shit on Twitter to try and get a fight. And when Chris Lytle was in BKB with me, I was like, Oh, there can only be one <laughs> lights out, we'll have to fight for the name. And he just laughed it off, and then when I met him, he was fucking massive. So I was like, oh, <laughs> the guy didn't call me out on it. And uh, just, just finally, um, if there are, I mean, when, when, and a question I know you got asked, I mean, how can people watch your fight on the 23rd in the UK? The uh, best way to do it is via the BKFC app. Um, that's a good shout, I need to post my. Uh, I got a link, click on it, it's like $6.99, which works up to about £4.78 a month. 
if you're not interested in it, cancel straight away. There's no subscription, but um, it helps me out with speed points. Um, and yeah, that's the best way the app is. It's pretty good. It's got all my old flights on there, so probably now is the time to sign up because you'll get Omaha next week, which is the title fight. My fight two weeks later, all the old fights, um, all my old interviews, has got stuff on there. It's a really good app, to be fair. They've done really well. But... And I think I'm right to say, you know, an app is a, it sounds like something just on the phone. You can connect this up to your television and everything and watch it on your TV. Yeah, um, like I, I downloaded the app on my Fire Stick for my TV. It's on my computer and work, so I can just click on the, well, actually, you can go to the website if you've got a computer. But yes, yeah, same thing. If you've got a smart TV, it's probably available on there. Um, if not, I think they give you some other options like Fight TV and stuff like that. Okay, and if there are any fans of those for like, short notice who want to perhaps go to Miami to support you, I mean, what, what's their best options for tickets and that type of thing? Uh, hit me up for tickets. Um, I've ordered a few already. There's, a, there's about seven or eight of us going over. Um, yeah, if you, if you fancy it, you're in just to happen to be in Florida and you want to come support, give me a shout. I'll sort you out some tickets. Um, it's, I check online for one of the boys. The flights are quite cheap at the moment, so now is the time to jump on. And we've got an Airbnb between six of us for like two hundred dollars each week, so it's it's cheaper than my holiday to Ibiza. I can't believe it. <laughs> and Disney World is just down the road as well. And Disney World is just down the world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you want to take a family, Dublin's the better. Huh? <laughs> yeah. If you want to hit me up. And uh, what's your what's your, your handle on Instagram and Twitter? If you want to follow you. Uh, Twitter, I'm James Lily fourteen eleven. Instagram, I'm James Lily eighty six. Um, I think I'm gonna have to get a Facebook page up and going soon, but it'll be more like a fan page because they, they always ask me to tag them and stuff. But I've also got only fans, which hasn't any subscribers yet, so you know. <laughs> and I uh, just to mention you, you, the documentary which we made has been shown on 9th of June in Port Talbot. Um, just want to tell us about that. Yeah, if you're in the area. Um, and you've ever been up there for one of my drop poets, um, or if you haven't, come up along. It's a great night. Um, it's a place called Avon Hills. Uh, it's a little, like, it's an inlay set. Uh, it's a really cool place. There's some bands playing on after, but there's a documentary that Kieran's filmed about the build up the New Orleans itself. Um, it should be comedy gold, so <laughs> it's not, I don't think it's going to be a typical fight documentary because we're not your typical. <laughs> You know, fight team to be honest so yeah you should come along um it's completely free we will be holding a raffle to raise money for the charity so yeah again if you're in the area june 9th have nails okay mate and uh good luck on the 23rd thank you mate cheers Happy days. <laughs>